If you are a beginner in the credit card space, you may have anywhere from one to three credit cards. And in this video, I wanna talk about the best beginner cards that you should look out for when you are planning your next application. And if you don't have any credit cards, this could be a great video for you too. So we'll start right there. If you're looking for your very first credit card, I want you to keep things so simple, so easy. I'm assuming you have a checking account. so whatever bank you have a checking account with, you may want to go to that bank and ask them if they have any credit cards for beginners and just mention that you don't have any credit cards right now, but you're looking for a basic card that you would be approved for. And if you don't have any credit history, they may just offer you a card with no rewards. And that's all you really need to focus on right now is getting started. Just get that first credit card and then build up smart financial habits with credit cards so that you can apply for cards two, three, four, and others down the road. So for example, if you already have a checking account with Chase, you may want to go with the Freedom Rise card. Before applying for this card, it says that you have increased approval odds if you have at least $250 in your Chase checking account. But I would recommend actually talking to a banker or a teller at a location just to confirm that you may be approved for this card. I wouldn't want you to try to apply for a card that is maybe out of your range right now when you currently don't have any credit. If you have checking or savings accounts for other banks like Citi, Capital One, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, anything like that, just get started with a credit card that you will most likely be approved for so that in a couple months, maybe three, six, or 12 months, you're ready for your second card. And with that first card, always make sure that you're paying off your balance in full and on time every single month so that your credit score can increase and you never pay a single cent in interest. Just because you now have a credit card does not mean that you have more money to spend. Just spend it like you normally would with your debit card that you have been using. And now with credit card number two, we now get into a ton of other options for you. This is where I want to spend the majority of our time today because you could apply for one of these cards as your second card ever or your third card ever. It just all depends on what you're going for and if you want a lot of these no annual fee cards that I'm going to talk about. This section is also when you're going to start thinking about the rewards that you're earning on your credit cards. And so with this first category we're going to talk about is the 2% cashback card or a lot of people like to refer to these ones as your catch-all card where you're going to be spending the majority of of your money. So for these two cards, I want to talk about the Wells Fargo Active Cash and the City Double Cash. Both of these cards are going to be earning 2% cash back. The Active Cash is going to come with a welcome bonus of $200 when you spend $1,000 in the first three months. So just put all of your everyday purchases on this card and usually this will be more than $1,000 in three months and you will earn a $200 cash back bonus. And other than that, this card is extremely simple, 2% cash back on every purchase. And then with this city double cash, you are going to be earning a $200 bonus as well, this time when you spend $1,500 in the first six months of holding the card. And this 2% cash back that you're going to be earning on every purchase is going to be broken down as 1% cash back when you make the purchase. And then the additional 1% cash back will come when you pay off your balance for that card. So these cards are similar. How would you know which which one you want to apply for. Well, I would say that if you have a checking or savings account with Wells Fargo and maybe your first credit card was a Wells Fargo credit card, we'll definitely get the active cash. And then the same thing with the city double cash. If you already have a city credit card as your first card, or if you have a checking or savings account with them, then I would recommend going this route. There's plenty of other 2% cashback cards out there. There's so many of them that I can't list all of them in this video. So you could go that route, but I would uh, recommend going with the active cash or with the double cash because 
the Wells Fargo and City ecosystems are best used later on down the road if you want to start earning travel points. With this next category of cards, these are the 3% cards. So in certain everyday categories, you can earn 3% cash back so that you're earning more than the base rate of 2% cash back. The first one is the Capital One Saver. You're going to be earning unlimited 3% cash back on dining, entertainment, popular streaming services, and at grocery stores. There's other ways where you may be able to earn more than 3% cash back, like 5% cash back when you book hotels and rental cars through Capital One Travel and 8% cash back on Capital One Entertainment purchases. But for most of your purchases on this card, you're going to be earning 3% cash back and then 1% cash back on everything else. This card also has a no foreign transaction fees. So if you are traveling internationally, you can use this card on every purchase without fear of being charged a 2 or 3% fee just for spending internationally. And it also comes with a $200 cash back bonus when you spend just $500 in the first three months. This is probably my favorite no annual fee credit card out there across all issuers. So this is definitely a big one to get. And this next one's also really good. The Wells Fargo autograph card, another no annual fee card. And this one also has a bonus in the form of 20,000 Wells Fargo points when you spend $1,000 in the first three months. Again, another easy bonus to hit. And this could be a great card for you because it has a ton of three times point earning categories. We were talking about cash back all the way up to this point in the video, and now we're earning points on this Wells Fargo autograph card, but that's okay. If you want cash back, you can just redeem them for cash back if you want, or for travel points later on. Cash back is a little bit more simple, so that's where I'd say that most beginners should start. The three times point earning categories on this card is restaurants, travel, gas, transit, popular streaming services, and phone plans, and then one times points on every other purchase. So a ton of three points earning categories there. There's a lot more to love about all of these cards mentioned in this video, but I'm trying to keep it simple so that you can understand the most important parts about each card. Out of these two cards, I would most likely lean towards the saver, especially if this is your second ever credit card, just because there is a pre-approval tool on the Capital One website. You can see right there if you're going to be approved for this one. But like I said previously, if you have a good relationship with Wells Fargo, well, you may be better off getting the active cash or the autograph card. But if you want to establish a relationship with Chase, then some of their credit cards might be where you should stop first. There's the Chase Freedom Flex and the Freedom Unlimited, both no annual fee cards, and they offer really good cashback categories if you want to get these cards. And the reason I mentioned Chase kind of in their own category is because of the Chase 524 rule. You may not be somebody that is looking to get a ton of cards really fast, but if you've been spending a lot of time recently on YouTube or on blogs and you get really excited about credit cards, earning the maximum amount of cash back you can get, or travel points, you may have heard about the Chase 524 rule, which states that if you've been approved for five or more personal credit cards in the last 24 months, then Chase may auto deny you for all of their credit cards that you apply for. And that's why it's so important to get involved with Chase first, because if you are going to be applying for a lot of credit cards in a short period of time, well, you want to make sure that you have all of your Chase cards that you want before moving on to other issuers. And if you're somebody that's saying five credit cards in the past two years, why are you applying for that many cards? Well, that's okay. You don't need Chase cards right away if you don't want to follow this strategy. But for those of you who do know about this and you know you want to get a ton of credit cards, I would recommend the Freedom Flex if you want rotating 5% cash back categories. These change out every quarter. So every three months, there's a new way that you can earn 5% cash back. And it also comes with 3% cash back on dining and drugstores and 1% back on everything else. 
or you could get to the Chase Freedom Unlimited, which gives you 1.5% cash back on all purchases as a base. And then you can also earn 3% cash back on dining and drug stores. And each card, you can also earn 5% cash back through the Chase Travel Portal. Another Chase card out there is the Amazon Prime Visa, which gives you 5% cash back at amazon.com and other Amazon purchases like Whole Foods. And so if you are spending a ton of money at Amazon and want to maximize that specific category, then that could be a card for you. The whole getting around Chase 524 is a slightly more advanced strategy, but if you already have your first credit card with Chase, like with the Freedom Rise, well then there you go. You could get the Freedom Flex as your next credit card. In the same way, Bank of America, US Bank, or other issuers out there like American Express, if you are already in their ecosystem with a checking or savings account or your first credit card, I would also recommend you could go that route as your second credit card ever, because as long as there's no annual fee on that card, then it will never penalize you to keep that card open, even if you eventually no longer put a lot of spend on that card. So we've been talking a lot about cash back in this video, and I think it's very important to kind of get a strong base of no annual fee cashback cards. But if you already travel a lot, whether it's for personal reasons or for business reasons, then you may look to get some of these no annual fee credit cards from hotels or airlines. I'm not going to go too in depth on these cards, but they are ones like the American Express Hilton Honors Card, the Marriott Bonvoy Bold Card, the IHG Traveler, the United Gateway, or the Delta Blue Cards, hotel and airline cards, all with no annual fee, and they come with their own unique travel perks. And it's pretty nice to get started in these hotel or airline ecosystems with their credit cards if you use their services a lot. So you could skip the cashback cards if you really wanted to do so, and then earn a ton of hotel loyalty points or airline points in those ecosystems if you really wanna do that, but Again, my first preference would be to earn cash back and then look to these cards later on. But if you just wanna go for them right now, you totally could do that. And with any card I mentioned in this video, I will have links down in the description so that it is easy for you to go to those issuers' websites to check out all of the cards I mentioned in this video, whether they're a referral link or just the basic public link so that you can find the cards that you like best. Well, I do have a video for you right here where I told you my top 10 cashback cards to get. So you can click on that video to learn more about each one of those cards. Or if you want to see my ranking of my top six no annual fee credit cards, that will be right there for you. So thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.